Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm so pleased to be joined by Lee Sung Jin, a three-time Emmy nominee this year for producing, writing, and directing the Netflix limited series, Beef. Uh, Sonny, congratulations on the nominations. Uh, Beef had 13 overall nominations, tied for the most for a limited series. I guess just in general, how did it feel to get that kind of broad recognition uh, from the Academy for the show? Oh, I mean, uh, it's it's amazing. Um, you know, uh, our cast and crew worked so hard on it and um, to be recognized by our peers is, you know, the best thing. And, uh, you know, that that uh, enthusiasm quickly got dampened by the uh, AMPTP um, refusing to pay fair wages. But uh, here we are. <laughs> yes, we'll see. The Emmys now are in January as we're recording this. So, yes, uh, we'll find out the results then, maybe. Uh, <laughs> You're nominated as a director for the finale for Figures of Light. It's your first directing credit, and it's a serious finale. And I found the episode in four maybe is slightly, it feels a, lot, a little different, certainly, from, like, the episodes that came before. And I guess I was wondering, like, when you wrote it, did you always envision you'd, you'd want to direct the finale and why the finale was one that you wanted to direct, I guess? Um, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I would have uh, loved to have directed more, but um, just it was mostly time. Uh, I, I hadn't uh, finished all the scripts when we had started production. And so, um, you know, I think the studio and network rightfully were uh, extremely worried that <laughs> I had too much going on. And so, um, you know, so I, I wanted to be able to wait till the end and um, and also you know, uh, seeing Jake and Hikari direct and kind of finding the footing of our show, I, I knew would help me greatly uh, as, a, as a first time director. And um, I've known Jake for, uh, you know, he's one of my closest friends and I've known him forever. And, um, you know, he, he's kind of him and Larkin, our DP and, and Grace, our production designer, are, are kind of the best training wheels one could have uh, for a first time director. So spending the most time I could with those training wheels was going to like set me up for success, I thought. Jake is also a nominee for directing. And I know, like you said, you're friends. I know you work on other projects. You're maybe <laughs> working on another project too. With it. I guess like, is there a friendly competition on the on the text <laughs> messages about this? Oh, yes. There's certainly some uh, friendly ribbing going on back and forth. I'm like, did you do Gold Derby? Because I, I think I'm going to. And uh, no, it's it's all it's all love, though, because, um, you know, uh, he, he really is so talented. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I've sought him out for beef because because I mean, everything I know about directing, I've I've you know pretty much either learned from movies or from him. And so, um, you know, I, I'm so glad that he's getting the rec recognition that he deserves. And um yeah, you know, we're both competitive. Uh, you know, is there a little part of us that that is, you know, you know, gonna gonna be a little bit happier if I, if I went short? But tr truly, it, it would be a W regardless, because um, I mean, that episode, Great Fabricator, it's it's so difficult, and that was also towards the end of the shoot, so we were running out of time and resources, and to be able to pull off what we did in that, and you know, in those days. Yeah, hats off to Jake for sure. Yeah, and, and like you said, I, I think the, the figures of light too as well is like a remarkable achievement. Those are two, it's a great show because I feel like it builds to these great final episodes, I guess. I, I found that like, I've it's very satisfying. And the ninth and 10th episodes are so different too. And like the way it kind of like resolves. I just love, you mentioned like coming, oh, going into the, the finale and getting to like see how the show and how the everything was like kind of coming together, right? And I guess like, you have these two amazing actors, Ali and Stephen, both nominated as well. Uh, this episode really lets them kind of mind the catharsis, I think, of the characters, or they're together for most of it, right? Like different and different different ways than it had been previously. I guess, like, how did you guys, or how did you work with them, and think about the performances heading into that final episode, and like how, like, did you at that point, like you said, like maybe they they're probably used to it, but I guess, like, I just find their work in the finale so really great and kind of like a real capper on the series so I guess like I uh, had to kind of work with them thank you so much um yeah uh you know I, th I think we always knew from like a bird's eye view that you know if, if you keep these characters kind of apart and just you know almost two ships passing in the night for nine episodes that once they are together that there would be some sort of there is a satisfaction there you know so I, I inherently kind of trusted that chord progression and 
but then in terms of preparation, uh, we really didn't have much time. Uh, it, it, by the end, it really was flying by the seat of our pants. So, um, you know, I don't, I, we didn't really get to, I think we like kind of tabled it in the trailer of Ali's trailer, like between episode nine takes just to like, so I could hear some of the dialogue, but it, it certainly wasn't as, you know, we didn't have an, as many days to prep as we did for some of the other episodes. So it was, it was just a lot of trust, to be honest, like amongst all of us, just, you know, I don't think Stephen or Ali had much time to like process the script because it came in so late. And um, I didn't really have much time to shot list. And so it really just became all of us as a team having really built that trust over several months to just kind of dive in together. And and in a weird way, I think that that worked out for the episode. It's almost like we as a crew were going through what <laughs> Danny and Amy were just, you know, at the end of our wits and out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, and it's a testament to their, I think, to their acting that they were able to just kind of jump in with with a script that came so late. And, um, and also, I think it's a testament to all of our dynamics that... Um, we kind of had a shorthand by then. Hmm. What, what was how complicated on that in the final episode were the uh, wrangling the crows for the opening <laughs> of it? Uh, the, the crows were actually uh, the, the animals on the show are like were so good. Uh, we had a really good um, uh, animal service, and uh, the crow wranglers were they're actually cravens. Okay. Uh, so that's something I learned that there's crows, there's ravens, and there's cravens. And I think they're slightly bigger than crows, uh, but they they were really professional, those crows. They were just like on their marks and then like squawked when we needed them to. Um, and, uh, and, and Jake actually shot um, second unit with the crows while I think I was doing the kind of like that opening car wreck mm -hmm. scene. And I would bounce back and forth because we were having... Um, we had to like talk about kind of like how how much how much squawk do we need really <laughs> and so uh yeah do we want it it's it's a weird thing with crows like do you want them to be like one syllable per like bunch of words do you want like a little bit and there's no real like you know answer correct answer you're just kind of going intuitively like i'm imagining the captions and kind of like the rhythm and so, uh, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. I I, I was actually really pleasantly surpri surprised by how fun it was working with all the animals. Um, our the dog on our show, um, uh, Luca, in the in the show, um, he he's like a veteran of television. He was the dog in that long running show, Dog with a Blog, uh, which I think was on like Nickelodeon or something. And so he was like just on it. <laughs> Like so good. You have the you have the top line dog acting here. It's really, <laughs> yeah. really great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I should thank him and and you know if, if we win. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That'd be a great part of the speech. Uh I want to not that, no no great transition here, but I, I want to ask you about the rest of the cast, not not just the animal cast, but I was I was <laughs> I love obviously Joseph Lee and Young Mazzino, also nominees uh for, for, for beef and new newcomers, I think, or at least for a lot of audiences, though they've been acting before. You have their I would qualify them both as like breakout kind of stars. They have these a lot. You you've given them a lot of really strong material and heavy material. I guess like, yeah. How satisfying was that to know that to see that they were able to like kind of pull it off? Because I mean, they're like such key characters. Obviously, Stephen and Allie are incredible in it. But it's hard to imagine the show working without that those supporting characters being so well drawn out and performed. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, our supporting cast was incredible. And if it were up to me, I, I, I wish that everyone was nominated, you know. Um, and and Joe and Young, um, you know, the, the hardest thing I think about any show is is tone, you know, like, especially for a first year show, you're not really sure like what the tone is. And you can kind of tell off the page, but still, it's a hard thing to decipher. And I mean, they just got it. Like, you know, they intuitively knew that, what was funny about those characters isn't, you know, you can't lean too hard into the, the comedic aspects of their personality or it starts to get really broad, you know, like uh, Joe, for example, like his character, George is such, you know, almost like a puppy dog and naive that you don't want it to overdo that or it starts to become, you know, like a different reality that the rest of the characters are in. And, 
I think from day one, he got it, you know, even his auditions, like there's just like a groundedness to everything that he was playing. And so it was really nice to feel that in the audition and then just see it kind of get fine tuned over the course of the season. And the same with young, I mean, gosh, that character, Paul is like, I mean, so funny to me, but uh, so much of it is, you know, the little things, the way he mumbles, uh, the, the, the tension between him wanting to be seen, but then also like, um, his self doubt that has been, you know, probably, you know, due to Danny mostly, um, been ingrained his whole life. And that's all, it could be either too sad if you play it wrong, or it could be like, you know, uh, almost like an eastbound and down character, which I, I love that show, but it's it, it's not beef. And so it is like really awesome to see how all the actors just kind of like got it intuitively and 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 delivered every day on set. Um, and then the same to 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 Maria, um, you know, man, like she's. She's a legend. Uh, History of Violence is one of my favorite movies of all time. That let that last scene in History of Violence at the dinner table, like just extraordinary. So I was so honored when she just, you know, agreed to do the show. And she elevated that character so much more than I had imagined on the page. Like in my mind, I had pictured kind of just like almost like the, the Waltons of Walmart, you know, like that kind of a character. And then once she came on board, we found that that you know, like there, there was more to flesh out. Like uh, she had some references of people that, she, you know, that she saw out in the world and with her and our costume designer and, and Grace, production designer, we all kind of started, this Jordan character started to emerge. She has this like brutalist taste and this extravagant wardrobe and a collection of crowns. And that all came about once Maria hopped on. I mean, it was truly I mean, she was very inspirational to to the concept of Jordan. And um, yeah, and there's so many little things she does. Like there's that speech in episode nine when she calls, you know, it's calling back to the, there's always something that both Danny and Amy have said. I did not think she was going to deliver it that way. She There's so much kind of like pain in the way that she's saying it as if she also has been distraught by this feeling but that her only solution is to keep buying keep consuming and so it's meant to be like advice but then she has this like undercurrent of pain that i was just so moved by when she delivered that line so um yeah, I could talk about the sporting cast for hours. I just, I, I love, I love them all so much. It, it's great. And like you're saying, like, I think all of them are so nuanced and really enhance the show, but also like the way you wrote those characters is so, so nuanced that it's like, it's just like a perfect match, right? It feels like, cause like, I think oh, like, it just is really, it's really so well done. Uh, when I talked about this show with, with people who are, who have watched it and enjoyed it, the music is one of the things that immediately comes <laughs> up. The soundtrack rules from full stop do you have a, a, a at the risk of asking you to pick a favorite do you have a favorite like needle drop that you put in there uh that you were like yes fuck yeah this is great uh oh man that's such a tough question i mean uh well ha first of all hats off to our music supervisor tiffany anders because you know as a writer you often are told not to put songs into scripts, you know, that you're never going to get them. And so we, I, I did the opposite where I even put them into not only the outline, but the pitch of the show. And so I did not foresee a future where I could get every single song that I put in. And that really is a testament to Tiffany who, you know, really worked so hard to get those songs, but um sorry <clears throat> coughing here <laughs> uh but um I, in terms of a favorite needle drop uh i would have to say it's probably a tie between the pilot and the finale because and for opposite reasons um the finale you know the smashing pumpkin song manny is it's one of my favorite songs um i listened to it so much as a teenager and i just always knew that that was going to be the song like for, even from pitch stage uh Ali Wong actually came up with the hospital bed moment, like cr crawling into bed. And so as soon as she pitched that, <clears throat> I, I knew that uh, I had that song in my head for it. And so that's really been wonderful to like watch that scene and just knowing that 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 initial feeling like came true and that it worked felt really nice. And then 
the pilot for the opposite reason because uh, I actually had um, written into the script Smashing Pumpkins today uh, for that ending because I wanted to bookend the show with Smashing Pumpkins songs. And we tried it in the edit and, um, you know, I was, I was actually uh, Harry Yoon who, um, you know, co-edited with Laura, the pilot. Mm -hmm. He was just like, yeah, I don't think this is working, man. And yeah, it was just like a little too self-serious for that moment because it's so goofy the way they're running. And um, we tried a million songs mm -hmm. and, and I had this playlist of beef songs that I've just been adding songs to for over three years. And, uh, and, and who Stinks the reason was on there and just on a whim. Uh, I was like, let's, let's try it. And we put it in. I was actually upstairs at our stage, uh, Crimson Studios in Chatsworth and Jake and everybody was shooting a scene downstairs. And I texted Jake and I was like, you got to come up and see this. Cause I think I, I think I found it. And he's like, what is it? And I was like, it's Hoobastank's The Reason. And, and Jake was like, oh, my God, no, no, do not put that in there. And then I was like, just can you trust me on this? And he, he came up and you could tell. Uh, and I've shared this story before, but so I don't think I've, I've uh, Jake won't mind the story. But he was like a little bit like came in wanting to hate it. You know, he, he had a little bit of a curmudgeonly arm cross stance. And then, you know, Harry and I played it for him and that arms came down, smile, immediate smile. And he was like, all right, yeah, no, that's it. That's the one. And so that was really fun, just the discovery process of that. And um, and every time I showed it to someone in the edit, it was like the same thing. Like people are like, really? And then you would play it and then instant smile. So that was really fun. It's great when you can do that with a song that has maybe not had the greatest reputation, right? As like a pop song, but you could like reclaim it and, and present it in a different way where it becomes awesome again, right? Like that kind of thing, I think is really cool. Exactly. And that's really what we were going for. And with a lot of the needle drops in the first half of the show was, it was a lot of songs that for whatever reason at the time may have been looked at a certain way even though we all secretly loved it. You know, I have always loved that song. And so there was sort of like a, like you're saying, a reclaiming of of the cringe, you know, it, it, Stephen really likes to use that word in, in terms of describing aspects of the show. And I think that's fits the spirit of beef. There's a lot of things about these characters that are kind of cringy or like you'd almost want to turn away from, but inside we all have that and so like it's almost like hey let's like be proud of the cringe a little bit yeah yeah i know you've talked about like how you've had at least this is a while back you had talked about like a vision for what it could have looked like if you did more seasons of this right i guess but without mm -hmm. i mean i guess that one thing i was wondering is like do you have like did you even if this is not something that you would ever do in your mind did you have like a vision of like what the next scene for Danny and Amy is after the end of the show. Like, did you have like a what's next for them or do you kind of just end it there and you're just like, I'm done with this for now? Uh, probably the latter, because we always pitch the show as an anthology series. And so, you know, I think in my initial PowerPoint pitch to buyers, it was like every season was a new beef, new characters. And I think I pitched them like four seasons worth of, <laughs> of new, be new beefs. Um, so that's why the finale is so close ended, you know, but I have said in other interviews that, you know, I, I'm kind of open to it all. Like, you know, I do really love the world that season one's created. I love Danny and Amy and all the supporting cast. And so, um, you know, I'd, I'd be down to explore that. I'd be down to explore new beefs. It's really you know, I want to dig into this, but, you know, you can't because of the strike. Right. And, um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of like dying to get back in there. But, um, you know, uh, it's it's just so crazy to me how what seemed like should be not that hard of a thing for for the studios and networks to agree on that it's taking this long to just be fair. I just right. I, I, I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, ho hopefully a, res a resolution soon, because I'm sure I'm not alone in saying I would love, I can't wait to see what you do next. Uh, and this show obviously is a great showing of your skills, a three-time Emmy nominee for Beef, uh, Lee Sung Jin. Thank you so much for doing this and congratulations again. Oh, thanks so much. Appreciate it. 